Plus Library Association, Sri Pradeep Ratan, General Secretary PCLA, Ms. Taranjit Kaur, Finance Secretary PCLA, Dr. Pooja Bhandari, Joint Secretary PCLA, and all the technical and coordinating team working behind and to all my dear participants connected around the world. With this note, I invite Dr. Priya Rai, President, Association of Indian Law Libraries, to pronounce welcome and opening remarks. Dr. Priya, please come forward for the welcome and opening remarks. Ma'am, please unmute. Dr. Priya, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Madam, you are not mute. You are mute. Hello, hello. Am I audible yes. to all now? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Sona. Uh, very good afternoon to all. I take this opportunity. Arjun, bhai, Arjun please mute, mute others. Arjun, bhai, please mute oh. others. I take this opportunity as, and as a privilege to welcome all the res respected dignitaries and participants. As a president of AILL Association of Indian Law Libraries, I take this pride to thank Punjab College Librarians Association. As to get associated with AILL for organizing such a great event with such kind of thoughtful topic, pedagogy of teaching integration in libraries, empowering 21st century learning. Well, it is a high time that such an event takes place to highlight the remarkable contribution of libraries to fostering learning and research. I would like to welcome and thank President PCLA Shri Brijinder Pal Singh Dhimanji and Joint Secretary Shri Pradeep Ratanji to support their full participation. It is indeed a great pleasure to welcome all the backbone of PCLA Shri Rupinder Singh Ji, Senior Vice President PCLA, Dr. Prabhjot Kaur, Vice President PCLA, Ms. Charanjit Kaur and Dr. Pooja Bhandari Ji. I extend my welcome to all the invited speakers, Dr. P. Venkata Rao, Dr. Preeti Shade, and Dr. Akash Singh. Last, not the least, I warmly welcome all, all the highly professional and committed team members of AILL, Dr. Akash, Dr. Arjun, Ms. Sonam, Dr. Sanjeev, uh, Shivaji, and all the participants who have joined this platform from different corners of the globe. Well, friends, Association of Indian Law Library is fully dedicated to strive the advancement of profession and the professional as well. This is the fourth program of AILL under the webinar series. The main objective behind organizing series of online events are to provide a common forum for library professionals for exchange of information, idea, experiences, and expertise. Today's topic of discussion in is pedagogy of teaching integration in libraries, which is mainly for empowering 21st century learning. As a society continues to experience a pedagogical shift in learning, students are provided with more opportunities to make connections, collaborations, communications, think critically and to be creative at the main time. This learning is powerful and purposeful authentic, active, and student-centric, student basically. Well, the emergence of global movement that calls for a new model of learning for 21st century and propose a new transformed model of teaching to enable new forms of learning that are needed to tackle various global you know, challenges also. The libraries play a really crucial role in this scenario and a vital part in transforming pedagogy to better supported acquisition of 21st century skills. But the central question to address is how can a teacher and a library, libraries best support learners and develop essential skills for 21st century, where we can say that rethinking uh, the pedagogy for the new learners is uh, as a crucial uh, phase. Well, digital advancement, we can say, are affecting academic research and instructions as an academic discipline, restructuring in a response to technology. But we all know that in inclusive knowledge societies are built only when equal access is enjoyed by all. 
Well, where, where is the, uh, the COVID-19 crisis we all know has acted as an inflection point where indeed digital libraries has remarkably thrown various sharp reliefs. Digital libraries have demonstrated their potential, not just to enable a richer, more diverse public domain, but also to promote human development. Institutions are tracing to shift their courses online. Students are engaging with e-books, e-learning, and researchers are drawing chiefly on electronic journals. An emergency response in UNESCO also launched the Global Education Coalition to help countries to scale up their best distance learning practices. Meanwhile, we can also that say that digital libraries are helping us to achieve certain key targets of sustainable development goals. Well, to ensure public access to information, to safeguard the world cultural heritage, and to provide safe, inclusive, and effective learning environment for all. With this note, I congratulate PCLA for their co timely contribution with AILL and organizing this webinar. I hope the deliberations will be fruitful and insightful to all the participants and Facebook listeners. Thank you so much. Now I have the honor to invite and introduce Dr. Preeti Shardaji for the invited talk. Dr. Preeti has almost two decades of vast experience in the field of LIS. And at present, she is working with Department of Higher Education, Chandigarh Administration, and presently posted at Postgraduate Government College for Girls, Chandigarh. Her current research includes blogging, e-resource management, RFID application in libraries, and setting up state-of-art modern academic library system. She is a life member of few, few professional bodies and has delivered many lectures and also conducted workshops and training programs. She has to her credit more than 20 papers published in journals and edited books. She is actively involved in the activities of Chandigarh Librarians Association and, in, and is also a national advisor to Ranganathan Society for Social Welfare and Librarian Development. Topic of Dr. Preeti talk is use of Google Classroom for providing library services. Dr. Preeti, please come forward for your invited talk. Thank you, Dr. Sonam. Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. you are audible. Thank you so much for giving this me opportunity. And uh, thank you, Rao, sir, for extending such a vast, uh, explaining the topic in such a good uh, way. Uh, I'll congratulate PCLA and AILL uh, for organizing this webinar. And in fact, uh, this is uh, really uh, very thankful to all of you for organizing these kind of workshops and webinars so that we can utilize this uh, lockdown period in a beautiful way rather than a learning way. Uh, for today, I will again thank you say thank you to Pradeep Ratan sir for accepting my topic because I wanted to speak on this topic and this topic is really very close to my heart and I'm, I am using Google Classroom since two years in my libraries and I have been utilizing all the features of it. So I'll be talking on how to use Google Classroom for enhancing uh, the uh, library services. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, we are moderators. We are middlemen. We are middlemen for the users and for the resources we have. We are connecting them. Whatever resources we have and whatever readers we have, we just find out which reader wants which information and we just supply the information. This is what we are doing. We need tools for doing this. And Google Classroom is just a tool for providing the library services to our users. What is Google Classroom? Google Classroom is just, uh, let me talk about the agenda of what I am going to talk today. 
it is just i'll be talking about google classroom how to get into it what are the benefits of google classroom what are the various features of it and how the librarians can make use of it there is a limitation also that i won't be talking about the features of google classroom which are delivered in the g suite because most of us don't have access to g suite account uh, g suite account of education so i'll be using the simple google classroom which i have been using in my classes the, the another feature is that i'm just showing you a ppt of all the features of google classroom i am not going to give you a live demo because the time is not uh, so much so that i can show you the uh, virtual features of google classroom so i'm just sharing the ppt and i'll be showing how we can use the classroom in our class in our classes and for providing library services to the users what is google classroom it is another learning management software just like moodle or uh, other learning management softwares it uh, has three key areas posing questions our users can pose us questions and our we pose questions to users if i'm organizing something if i'm organizing an event if i'm organizing a uh, competition i can give uh, assignment to the students and students can give the assignment back i can rate the assignments and i can revert back to the students if i want to conduct a survey i can use the google form over here and i can just conduct the survey i have to integrate the google form into the google classroom and i can do the survey in the same way when i am organizing a quiz i can integrate the quiz in the google classroom and i can just send it to my student students give me the desired uh, uh, students give me the feedback or the answers i evaluate them and turn them to grades this is what google classroom does it is affordable because it's free it's secure because it's it's of google and most of us uh, have a gmail account we can use it whatever we do whatever we do in the google classroom is being saved in our google drive so it losing the data is not possible whatever we have in our google drive is always saved let's talk something about the history of google classroom it was in august 2014 when it was launched but it has very very limited features and for librarian sharing of resources was must and so the, the but this feature was missing so we were not using it. but in august 2018 it was updated and the feature of sharing the resources and integrating the other google app was added and with this i would say that about 200 million people, educators are using the google classroom right now it includes teachers and the librarian as well it is regularly updated in april 2020 the google meter meet feature has been integrated with the google classroom so it is regularly updated it is very good very simple to use and very flexible to use. other benefits include flipped classroom this is the way now teaching has developed teacher share the resources to the students and the students read the resources come back with a question in the same way we librarians Just, can just share our resources resources like i share my orientation ppt i share my tutorials i share my passwords i share my videos uh, and i share my videos about uh, how to use the library website how to use library blog students come up with a question in this way the google classroom us provide us the flipped classroom environment as i told everything is being saved in google drive so the uh, whatever is we do in the google uh, classroom is being saved in the google drive with the name with the folder name classroom all the apps of google like calendar slides sheets is being integrated with the google classroom other apps around 70 other apps are also being integrated with the google classroom like quizlet google classroom help us to interact with our students with our colleagues with our peers 
it helps the collaborative work. If I'm making a report, I can share a doc, Google doc, we can make the report together and just upload the report. To save the time, because we are saving a lot of time by not doing the repetitive process. As I told, we can do assessment and grading in the Google Classroom itself. In a way, we are using my library, Google Classroom, in three ways. Information literacy, interaction, with the, uh, interaction and discussion with the peers and the students, and providing them. I provide them lots of videos and lots of PPTs about how to use the library and how to reach the required information. I do lots of interaction and discussion. We have book talks and many uh, discussion forums and integrated in the Google Classroom. I provide lots of material to my students. I, I have divided my material under various topics. And whenever new class enters a new session, I provide the, I add the students in that class and I provide the material to them. Let's start with the Google Classroom. What you need for Google Classroom? You just need an e email account, Gmail account. Either you can join uh, by typing classroom.google.com or you can download an app. It will ask you to continue and accept the terms and conditions. Once you do it, this window will open. In this window, you will find, in this window, that you will find a join option over here. A plus sign is there and there are two options for that, join class or create class. If a peer has already created a class, you, do, you just have to join the class. He must have sent you an email for joining the class or he must have given you the class code to join the class. I'll show where the class code appears. Or if you want to create your own class, you can just click on it. It will ask you what is the name of the class, uh, what are uh, other details, sections, locations, and subject of the class. Once you fill, the class is created. Once the class is created, the screen appears like this. It, uh, you can change this uh, theme. You can upload a picture. And this is the class code. If you click on this button, the class code could, can be enlarge and you can share this class code with your students and peers so that they can join this class by uh, um, by filling this class code. This is what the Google Classroom looks like. I'll be talking about four main features of the Google Classroom. Four main features are stream, classwork, people, days. I'll also talk about something on the setting. Let's talk, uh, one, take one by one, settings. Setting is just to control the class, how to add the students, how to uh, how to delete the students, how, how to uh, get the class description, change the class code, change the class location, how can the student can post, how can student come in, is, teach, is teacher is allowed to comment or not, is the students is allowed to comment or not, these all things we decide in the setting. And this is what the settings looks like. This is people, the second, second feature of Google Classroom. In people, we add co-workers and users. We can add, we can view, we can remove our students and teachers. There are uh, teachers, uh, if I teach, add teacher in my class, it has all the rights, except one, he cannot delete the class, Second, he cannot delete me as an admin. So I'll be always the admin because I have created the class and he can not delete the class. These two options that teachers didn't have. Otherwise, teacher can use the classroom as in uh, the way I'm using the class. There are two ways to add the students and the teacher. First is inviting them through the email or giving the class code. I, show you where, I showed you where the class code exists. Let's talk about the next feature. It is announcement. Announcement is the conversational hub. Here, teacher can talk to the student. I, librarian, can talk to the student. Student can interact with me. I can send them a PPT. I can send them a video. I can send them some instruction. If I, saw, I have some news, I share from here. If student wants to ask something, they can share 
if uh, we have a forum we are discussing about some topic we can discuss here it is just like a chat box whatever we do in whatsapp chat box we can do here whatever we upload in a chat box of the uh, whatsapp group we can do here the beauty is that everything is being saved in our google drive nothing is there in our phone nothing is there in our desktop or laptop everything is being saved in our google drive it is a virtual forum we can have book discussion we can have book talks we can discuss n number of things over there control is again in the hands of admin i can choose who can be invited for the talk i can choose which class i want to invite i can have the choice of the class as well as the students of the class i have two choice choices over there now just what i am doing with the stream in my uh, college i am doing library orientation i make pdfs and videos and send them to the students students see them and come back to me and ask the question about the things i provide the literacy services how to use the library how to define the library services how to get the material how to use fair any other literacy services are provided through the google classroom itself uh if this webinar was to be telecast on youtube i would have given the link of youtube over here and student uh, must have watched from this uh, from google classroom itself i provide the library virtual library tours and uh, i tell how to use the library website and blog and i also provide subject specific tutorials like ma wants whatever material i have how to use ndli how to use inflamer whatever tutorials they require just send them to the google classroom this is the next part of google classroom and this is these for the teachers teachers usually use this platform classroom in this uh, i am using the this part for giving the material i have divided all the material topic wise and i provide all the material to the specific class once the class is over once the session is over i just archive the class and when the next class appears i restore the class or copy the class the material is automatically transferred to it. whenever i do surveys or i had i have some competition some kind of competition maybe a poster competition or a bookmark book review whatever competitions are i am organizing in my college i am doing through it i know which class i have to uh, take into consideration i know which students i have to take into consideration i identify and post them and this is the way when i do a quiz this is the way the quiz is returned i have given uh, 30 people the quiz 27 uh, have not returned three have returned and i can grade the assignments over here i can grade the quiz over here. this is the way google classroom works for the library this is the last part uh, i hope i am on time and this is the last part uh, i can edit the classroom settings anytime whenever i feel that something is going wrong i want to disable the class code because n number of students are joining if i want to uh, change the class name or i want to change how the classroom should look i can edit it i can delete the class if i think the class is no more needed the material is no more needed the i can delete the class but better option is always to archive the class if i if i archive the class the class will always be there it will have all the material but interaction will be stopped student can't post anything i can't post anything but the material will always be available for the student i never delete a class personally i always archive it i have more than 100 class classes in my google classroom account the limit of classes is not there 250 students can be added to a class and 20 teachers can be added to class this is the limitation for the google classroom but the number of classes for number of the classes there is no limitation so i have many i would say in the last that google classroom can be used for reflections 
I can duplicate the thing. I can make things available in very little time. Visual approaches is very, very much possible for the Google Classroom in the form of PPTs, in the form of JPGs, in the form of uh, videos. I am supplying n number of material, n number of documents to my students. Sharing is possible. Students also share documents with me. Student, whenever I have a poster competition or bookmark question, I have a huge collection for them. And it doesn't uh, have hamper, I just don't uh, destroy them because of lack of space. And they are not, uh, uh, they are always with me. Convenience is there because searchable and uh, duplicating is very, very easy. Content creation because we work in collaboration. So content creation is hard and it leads to the critical thinking. I would say we should be literary coaches. We should tell them uh, to reach the uh, material, use the material. And with Google Classroom, our role of literary coach can be fulfilled very much. Thank you so much for listening to me. And if you have any query, please contact me. Thank you so much. Many thanks, Dr. Priti ji, for informing us in detail about Google Classroom and its various features and importance in the teaching learning process, which is very much uh, needed during this global pandemic.